I'm Jose Rodríguez Palomares. I'm a cardiologist. I'm based in Barcelona, Spain. And I've been the honor to be uh, the chair of the guidelines uh, about peripheral arterial and aortic diseases 2024 from the European Society of Cardiology. So I think uh, the previous guidelines uh, were published in 2014. So it was like 10 years ago. And there has been many uh, updates in the last 10 years about aortic diseases. So first of all, one of the main problems is that there has been a huge amount of publications in terms of genetic aortic diseases that they were not implemented in previous guidelines. Also, uh, there were a lot of new information about uh, endovascular treatments of patients with aortic diseases that were not included in previous guidelines. And also, it has been an improvement in technology, in diagnosis, in patients with aortic diseases that were not implemented in previous guidelines. So there were a lot of new information published in these years that had to be updated and put it all together in these, in these years' new guidelines. So uh, there are many key messages uh, new in these guidelines. So first of all, we consider that uh, these were the first guidelines that combined aortic diseases and peripheral uh, uh, arterial diseases. That means that we consider the whole cardiovascular system as a whole. So the first message is that when we are dealing with a patient with an arterial disease, we have to consider globally the patient to have a holistic evaluation of this patient because the probability of having peripheral arterial diseases is very high if we consider other carotid diseases, for example, or aortic diseases. So we have to combine and explore the cardiovascular system completely. So this is, was one, to, to perform a holistic approach in the cardiovascular disease. Then, if we are considering a global evaluation, we need multidisciplinary, a multidisciplinary team to evaluate this patient. We need cardiologists with angiologists, with vascular surgeons, with cardiac surgeons, working all together in order to, be, uh, to give the best treatment to the patient. Another important point in these guidelines was to put the patient in the center of the disease. So it is important that the patient has to share or be part of the shared decision-making approach and to empower the patient to decide the best option of treatment for the patient. So that's very emphasized also in our guidelines. Another important point is education. I mean, not only is treatment of the disease, it's also prevention of the disease. So if we give information to our patients in terms of nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, reduce smoking, so we are avoiding the start of the disease and also the progression of the disease. And finally, a screening. We are dealing with a disease that is underdiagnosed. It's undertreated. So it's very important to screen, for example, women beyond 65 years because they are a target population that are under, underdiagnosed, undertreated, and when they present with, with symptoms, they are usually in a late stage of the disease or with a complication that we arrive really late. So there are still many areas that we don't have many studies. I mean, compared to coronary artery diseases, uh, aortic diseases are still, but there are a lot of gaps in, in knowledge still. So we need still uh, more, much more information in peripheral artery diseases and aortic diseases compared to other, like for example, coronary artery diseases. But especially attention uh, needs to be done in patients with a genetic aortic diseases. There are not clinical trials, many related to this disease, and there are patients that they are in a high risk of complications that we don't know still how to manage them. And also, I mean, the screening is very important. And also to recommend that uh, we are dealing with chronic diseases, and it's very important not only to talk to the patient, also to the caregivers, the relatives of the patient, just to make sure that the patient is following the treatment, is continuing the different the changes in lifestyle. So also uh, all the information around the patient is also very important. The, the most important challenges is uh, heterogeneity in between the different countries. So when we are uh, writing guidelines, uh, we are considering an average uh, national health system, but there are many differences in, in the different countries. So even though that we try to reflect this a lot, 
we didn't put numbers about to decide which centers are uh, referral centers because the, the, there can be differences in between different countries. And also in terms of technology, we also applied for the imaging modalities that are available in all countries and prioritized them. There are inhomogeneities in between different countries that maybe the application of the treatments and the applications of the technology could be different. But at least we have an average uh, messages about te techno technological issues, treatment, that maybe we try to implement in most of the countries. I encourage everyone to, to read the guidelines, to discuss the guidelines, uh, the, 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 to interact with the task force members, and also we have our emails in there, so we are also available if anyone has any discussion, because, I mean, it's important to recognize uh, why we decided to put this recommendation or other recommendations, and we are very open to clarify all the different doubts that the population or the physicians can have.